This is Father Adam, and it is Sunday. And while because of this coronavirus, I am not able to celebrate Mass for you in church, I'm still celebrating Mass for you and holding you in my heart and praying for you and lifting you up to the Lord, you and your intentions. You know, right now, I find myself surrounded by these messages of people saying, I just want this to be over. I want this pandemic to be over and I want to forget about it, people say. I want this election to be over and I want it to be erased from my memory. I just want to go back to normal. That is not the attitude of biblical people. People who know that as people of God, We are not called to forget, but we are called to remember and learn from tough experiences. Not forget, but remember. The central action of our faith, Holy Mass, is all about remembering what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And not only that, as the new people of Israel, we are called to remember what God did for the people of Israel in the Passover as the angel of death passed them over. Not only that, the people of Israel, and we are the new people of Israel, the new people of God. We are called to remember how God fed the people in the desert with manna flowing from heaven. All that God did for us, we are called to remember and to learn from our experiences, not to forget them. You know, biblical people learn from their experiences and ask questions. Like right now, ask the question, why is God permitting this to happen to you? Why did God permit this or that situation, even an abusive situation to happen to you in your life? I've asked myself that many times. Why did God permit me to be bullied in school? I would not be the priest or the person I am if it wasn't for that experience or the experience of having to go through the divorce of my parents or or coming here as an immigrant of leaving my my grandma and and my family and all that was familiar in Poland of of being born in poverty in Poland of living under communism if it wasn't for those experiences i wouldn't be who i am today because god is interested in developing me and god uses these experiences to develop us think of it as a plow that is plowing the soil. You, you are being plowed for new seed to be planted and spring into new life. This pandemic is is a plow that has arrived in your life to plow the soil for something new to be born in your life. If it wasn't for the experience of having to, to go through seeing Two seminarians when I was in the seminary committing suicide, one hanging himself and one throwing himself from a fifth story building, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Those painful experiences in my own life have made me who I am right now. I wouldn't be able to understand people and life as I do, if it wasn't for the fact that I weighed 325 pounds at one point in my life. I mean, there is a reason why God permits everything that happens. God permits everything because God is all powerful and he is permitting your tough experiences for your own development. Ultimately, you have to choose whether you believe that God is love Because if God is love and God is your loving father, then there is nothing that God would allow to happen to you that isn't for your own good. Even those seemingly bad situations ultimately work for the good because the Bible says there is nothing bad that happens to us only our perception of what is happening to us. Because all things, the Bible says, work for the good for those who love God. You know, I have been traveling with Mary these days. Mary, 
whose very name means struggle. Mary, she struggled in her life. I mean, think about everything that she had to go through. She was 12 years old, being found pregnant. I mean, having to tell her parents and then her fiance and being a woman and then having to travel in desert territory surrounded by wild animals to visit her cousin, not having a place to give birth to Jesus, having to give birth in a cave surrounded by doo-doo. I mean, come on, Mary struggled. And yet, what does the Bible tell us? Mary kept all these things in her heart and reflected on them. Mary did not want to forget those things that happened to her. Mary kept them and reflected on them and grew from them and was developed by them. Is that what you do in your own life? Or do you try to erase what has happened to you instead of embracing what has happened to you? You see, Mary teaches us that as biblical people, once we have been through a hard experience, we are to embrace it, pray about it, and ask questions, not forget it. So what does God want you to learn from your own tough, horrific experiences, the experience of going through a divorce, the experience of being abused, the experience of having an addiction or being depressed or not being able to lose weight. What does God want you to learn from these experiences? The experiences of betrayal, the experiences of losing your job or not being able to pay your bills or, or having uh, a child that is addicted to drugs or, you know, what, what does God want me to learn from this experience? How is God developing me? You know, Mary teaches us very well that God is molding us as God was molding Mary. Stop being like the woman who comes to me and says, Father, I just can't forget the fact that my husband cheated on me. I just want to forget that he cheated on me. I want to forget it, Father, and I want to move on with my life. Well, you can't forget that you were cheated on. You can't forget the betrayal. How can you forget something as painful as that? You can't. And that's your problem. You're not called to forget. You're called to forgive. As I told this particular lady that I'm thinking of right now, I as I told her, I want to tell you, you're not called to forget. You're called to forgive and to live with forgiveness, not with amnesia. You know, I will never forget my own father in one of his visits to me in Clear Lake, sitting around in the evening, talking with him. He said to me, you know, everything would have been different in our life, everything would have been different in my life had I been able to forgive your mother. If I could only forgive your mother, things would have been different. But I didn't know how. Those words I will never forget. I didn't know how to forgive her, he said. I didn't know how. That's what eventually caused their divorce and the breakup of my family and the stress of it and the consequences of it led me to weigh more than 325 pounds at one point in my life. You see, not confronting the problems of their marriage and facing them head on, trying to run away from them is what caused my family to be destroyed, trying to erase and forget instead of embracing the problem and facing it and confronting it is what caused my family to be broken up and caused unbelievable 
consequences. That's what I want you to avoid in your own life. Face the problem. Unlike my parents that didn't face the problem but chose divorce, you face the problem. Forgetting and erasing and trying to do away with your issues isn't the answer. It wasn't the answer for my family. It destroyed my family and it will destroy yours as well. Stop running away from your problems and issues. Face them. Embrace them. Learn to live with them. You are not a finished product. You are a work in progress. Work on those issues in 2021. My father said to me, I just didn't know how to forgive your mother. I didn't know how to do it. You know, I will never forget Clara Barton a saintly woman of God, the founder of the International Red Cross. She had a terrible thing happen to her. Her husband cheated on her with her best friend. And after a while, Clara took her husband back and began to associate also with her best friend, went to coffee shops with her best friend, and the people started talking, and they started saying, Clara, don't you remember what your husband did to you? Don't you remember what your best friend did to you? How could you have taken him back? How could you associate with her as well? What's wrong with you, Clara? Don't you remember what they did to you? And Clara Barton looked at all those people and said, I don't remember what they did to me but I remember the moment in which I chose to forgive them. I don't remember what they did to me, but I remember the moment in which I chose to forgive. That's what you have to do as well in your own life. Choose forgiveness and choose to live by forgiveness. And when the devil comes and bombards you with those memories of what people did to you, you say, get away from me, Satan. I choose to forgive. I have chosen to forgive. When the devil comes and bombards you with those thoughts that you are ugly or fat or that you can't do it, you won't lose weight, you won't be able to get better. You won't be able to get over your addiction. Say, get away from me, Satan. I have chosen a different path. And you replace those thoughts of the devil with positive thoughts of faith. Choose to live the moment of faith and forgiveness, not the moment of resentment and grudges. Not forget not forgetting what happened to you, but embracing what happened to you and moving forward with it, not in spite of it, erasing it, but with it. You see, we are called to be Mary because she is the model of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. We call it her the model of discipleship. Mary teaches us that our victory is not that we will be victorious over all those problems and issues and stuff that bombards us, but Mary teaches us that it is a daily task to struggle every single day, to get up every day and say, I'm going to keep going, I will keep fighting, and my victory is not that I will be victorious over my problems or my issues or things that happen to me, or my addictions, or my thoughts. No, my victory is that I'm, is in my struggle. The victory is in my struggle. I am victorious as long as I struggle. I'm calling you in 2021 to be victorious because of the King of glory and the King of kings who was victorious as he struggled and calls us to do the same in our life. So struggle on. 
You can't forget what happened to you, but you can choose to move on, living the moment of mercy, grace, and forgiveness, learning from the experience, not forgetting the experience, living with the experience, not forgetting it. Mary thought of all these things, the Bible says, and kept them in her heart, reflecting on them. Mary remembers. Mary reflects. Mary prays. She did this throughout her life because the struggle continued throughout her life. She is the perfect companion. That's why I love Mary, y'all, so very much. She's a perfect companion for us especially for any of us who may find ourselves saying right now, I can't wait for this to end. Stop it. Embrace it. Live in the moment. Abandon yourself to God and know that all will be well because God is with you. You're not alone. As all was well for Mary, all will be well for you. What did Mary say? Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. God speaks to us in our struggles and God never calls us to return to that which we think is normal. God is calling to something new, not something old. God doesn't want you to go back. God wants you to go forward. So how are we going to go forward in 2021 being renewed by this pandemic experience? How am I going to go forward? Listen to God and see what God is telling you as to why God permitted this or that to happen to you. How does God want you to be renewed and reborn as a person? How does God want your family to be reborn and renewed? What's the new you that God is inviting you to embrace? Stop believing the lies that the seemingly bad things are awful and terrible and horrible in your life. Embrace them. So in this new year, in the midst of all your problems and issues and suffering and health problems and family problems and personal problems, your work problems, your addictions, your, your self-image problems, whatever, Okay, embrace them. Don't try to erase them. And see how God changes you into the new you. The you that lives remembering and pondering and reflecting and praying. The new you that forgives. The new you that doesn't hold a grudge. The new you that enters the AA program or another type of 12-step program, the new you that gets the counseling for your past issues and hurts, the new you that goes into an exercise program and a new eating program to better yourself, to lose weight and to get healthy, the new you that gets a new job, you know, the new you that, that finds the second half of your orange by developing a profile online, the new you that, that, that becomes something totally renewed. The new you that quits working so much and has time for your family, you, you, and the Bible and prayer. The new you that has time to smell the roses. You know, I feel it. God is making something new. It's a new year. Let it also be a new you.